Hi, greetings everyone. We are Nishtha and Parul, architects from India. We are here to discuss and present our research on walkability in Nagpur, a critical appraisal of city development proposals for pedestrians. Nagpur has a population of about 2.9 million and is India's 13th most populous as well as the 5th fastest growing city in the world. So why the subject of walkability? Various studies have indicated that urban centers will house 70% of the global population by 2050, wherein majority of such cities will be in India and China. Moreover, Indian urban studies have shown that most of the land use and urban form will be facing exponential changes and challenges to fulfill necessary demands, such as basic infrastructure and energy demand, public spaces, urban greens, pedestrianization, employment, good governance, etc. to achieve or promote a holistic, sustainable and livable urban environment. According to the 2011 Indian Census, about 23% of work trips happen on foot, 13% on bicycle and 18% on public transport, with only 15% of trips on private transport. Yet the situation is precisely surmised in an article dated August 2015 written by Ms. Sunita Narayan for Down to Earth magazine, titled Pedestrian Question. A number of people in our cities walk, but they are invisible to the planners and a nuisance to car drivers. According to government's own estimates, roughly 30% of city dwellers across the country commute daily by walking. The major challenges faced by the pedestrians are absent provisions like sidewalks, footpaths, foot over bridges, subways, poorly designed provisions such as improper levels, ill-placed street furniture, urban utilities, irregular footpath levels, encroachments, etc. Frequent civil works which include cable or drainage pipeline or electrical transform repairs, making these streets network perfect for accidents or traffic gridlocks. Insufficient capacity to plan and implement required changes, lack of public engagement, an economic-oriented approach towards planning the city instead of creating an inclusive one are major challenges faced due to governance and public participation. Stakeholders and their concerns Given the set premise, the deficient section in which exclusive urban planning ventures comprise of the people who are vulnerable, as per a single or multiple parameters such as age, physical abil ability, social safety, economic constraints, etc. Their concern is mobility across the city, which is highly dependent on components such as walkability and accessibility, both in public and paratransit transport mode. So the city that we've chosen to study for our research is Nagpur, which is situated in the state of Maharashtra in the Indian subcontinent. So why Nagpur? Nagpur has a population of about 2.9 million. It is India's 13th most populous city and Maharashtra's third most populated city. If we talk about economy, Nagpur's contribution to India's GDP is about 0.6% and to Maharashtra state's GDP is about 4%. Other attributes of Nagpur are that it is the central India's hub for health and education. It is also known as the state's winter capital and is also called the Orange City and the Tiger Capital. If we compare Nagpur to other international cities on the basis of area and population, it lies somewhere between Boston and Seattle, with an area of 217.65 square kilometers and a population of 31 lakhs. Since prehistoric times, Nagpur finds mention in the Vedic and modern scriptures and has derived its name from the river Nag or the local indigenous community known as Nag people. Later, the present day Nagpur city's foundation was laid down by the Gond king of Devgad, Bhakt Buland Shah in 1703. When the colonial rule was ongoing in India, British annexed the city in 1817 and that is when the consciousness for the planned city development was raised when Sir Patrick Giddies had visited the city in 1915. Before that, 
Municipal Council in 1864 and Nagpur Improvement Trust later on in 1936 was established to carry out the recommendations of Patrick Gittes. Located in central India, Nagpur is the winter capital of the state of Maharashtra. It is a tier 2 city and one of the million plus cities of India. It is divided into 10 administrative zones which are further subdivided into smallest units known as wards which are a total of 136 for the city. Due to its regional connectivity advantages, such features such as largest railway station, Nagpur Mumbai, Super Communication Expressway, Mehan, etc. This city is rapidly urbanizing with a higher change rate of more and more land covered from the natural to the built farm. As per the Traffic and Transportation Master Plan for Nagpur 2008 and then in 2015, as well as Nagpur's City Development Plan 2035, there are a total 1907 kilometers of roads in the city of which 1150 kilometers are in the NMC jurisdiction. The length of various different categories of roads are as follows arterial roads around 101 km, sub arterial roads 91 km, collector roads around 33 km, and remaining are the local roads. Before undertaking or selecting a specific street or two, a walkability assessment was carried out for the city of Nagpur. Under this observational study, few points were taken into consideration, which are as follows. Number one, pedestrian walkways. Although the ULB states that the majority of the city roads have footpaths, in the study it was found that they are a regularly absent feature. Wherever present, width of walkways available on the footpaths varies across the entire road lengths in the city. With regards to stormwater drainage, as per the NIT's Traffic and Transportation Plan 2008, and 2013's City Mobility Plan, the drainage facility is present all along the road lands on both sides of the right-of-way for 80% of the roads. However, in the study it was found that the system is ill-functioning and specifically during monsoon due to the flooding, walking is difficult and is treacherous. With regards to the third point, street illumination, the city roads 4% are illuminated with street lights on both sides of the carriageway. For arterial and sub-arterial roads, 76% have illumination on either side of the carriageway, wherein the one side is 24% and illumination in the center is around 52%. For fourth point, plantations. Nagpur city is considered as the second most greenest Indian city after Chandigarh, and besides its public garden and water bodies, specific streets are testament to that fact. Both major roads, that is the national and state highways, have plantations and trees along the main corridors. However, for aesthetic purpose, limited plantation along some of the arterial roads has been carried out especially in the old section and a lot of the street green has been recently removed due to metro flyover construction. Lastly, under the walkability assessment, study was also carried out for encroachments. It was found that advertisement poles, ill-placed railings, etc. discouraged pedestrians from using the pathways. In addition, traffic islands are an inconvenience to the pedestrians while crossing the road. Walkers, vendors and other obstacles such as trees, in few cases, poles, telephone utility boxes, street furniture, etc. also hinder the swift pedestrian movement. Therefore, in the observations, it was found that the use of the path footpath is highly limited. These issues have also been undertaken and have been incorporated in the formulation of vision and action plan in the Nagpur CMP 2013 as well as the smart city project agenda.
under the Nagpur City Mobility Plan 2000 cities, specifically, quote, the implementation of bike sharing system to improve last mile connectivity and creation of a comprehensive network of footpaths and cycle tracks, unquote, will be undertaken. Keeping in mind the same fact, the Smart City Project Agenda, Smart Mobility, has listed around seven to eight features or tasks for themselves. These are project tender sure, road and NMT, to minimize the harmful effects of civil works which keep on happening throughout the year, pedestrian forced initiative, move people initiative under which e-buses will be provided for the people, then smart bus shelters, project share a bike, project open street, e-rickshaws, junction improvement project and so forth. However, as per the 2017 implementation of Smart Cities Mission Maharashtra Review Report, the status of completion of all these projects in the city of Nagpur is still in their infancy, which has been further delayed due to the ongoing pandemic, and only financial models have been approved and mobilized for carrying out of the work. Post the walkability assessment, a specific area was identified and for the same, the old area of Sita Buldi was selected. Sita Buldi is one of the oldest sections of the Nagpur and is present at the intersection of the old and the new developments. It is presently the CBD of Nagpur with a high density of 700 persons per hectare and 184 acres of land. Thus, it offers advantages of central location, easy accessibility, intersection of major thoroughfares, close proximity to railway station as well as the bus stands, and major commercial activities. Stage 2 in the methodology comprised of understanding the user diversity, their behavior patterns, responses in different scenarios in socio-economic and cultural as well as geographical aspects, and events thus occurring on the sideways sidewalks and the footpaths on the identified streets. Stage 3 on understanding the above two and the interrelationship between the urban form, land use and the behavior pattern. Certain movement patterns were generated by the users and they were understood that how they respond to the aforementioned aspects. Stage 4 was analysis of whether the Smart City Action Plan proposals and sector plans as per CDP 2035 have brought on any changes or not. And finally, conclusion as to how inclusive street design can be achieved in case of Sita building in Nagpur and if prototyping can be done for the city. Now we shall discuss various features as listed in the methodology and the findings for the same. One urban morphology and the fabric. Given the varied commercial nature of Sita Bulli Market Street, high density mixed land use was found which has resulted in this particular area and the specific streets being 24-7 active. Presence of residential use that is apartments, residences above the retail area and lower floors has also resulted in higher degree of connectivity and change in user activity pattern. As indicated in the map, due to the small block size, it has also yielded rich urban fabric both in terms of physical and visual aspects. Also, recent construction of Metro Rail has added to the above aspect and has improved accessibility and mobility of pedestrian from all walks of life. With regards to open versus built ratio, there is a significant impact of the short blocks that are there and activity also has been impacted due to the same. In addition, the two streets are major links between the two transit hubs, that is the railway station and the bus stop and thus attract large number of people and high through traffic, both vehicular as well as pedestrian. For users and activity patterns, 
given the diverse commercial nature see the bully market streets have visitors mentioning shopping as their primary visit purpose the diverse land use makes this these streets also attract all types of pedestrian that is varied gender groups varied age groups professions such as students vendors professionals etc informal activities like hawking have made the space lively while connecting the streets however they also have encroached the width that may be available to encourage the pedestrian movement based on the two tangible and intangible factors following impact and responses were recorded such as the building height range is g plus 1 to g plus 4 on the selected 10 to 12 meter wide streets and hence they provide shade to the pedestrians and the vendors however absence uh, or the scarce presence of trees or plantation has added to the lack of shade which could provide respite from higher temperature urban heat island as well as air and noise pollution movement of people on these streets by walking or by vehicular has made these streets alive movement of people on the street either on foot or by vehicles these two streets are alive in their own characters in particular pedestrians nurture and encourage commercial activity on shopping streets which helps in developing more shops on the nearby streets higher walkability and accessibility is further fueled in these cases by the presence of good visual fields both old and new developments thus these this particular factor enables the pedestrian to make a clear spatial reference with regards to the city and their movement or the trip such scenarios also allow for higher degree of comfort and for an effective pedestrian movement in the sita bully market streets however urban services which are the basic needs of the society on the street that is street lights telephone booths toilets walkways parking and bus stops are lacking here and thus they harm the imageability as well as the usability of the street given the studied streets connect to major public transport facilities pedestrian traffic is maximum here thus a magnet for economic development as evident in the mapping also it was found that due to the varied user mix informal shopping has also developed here in addition most of the vending and hawking activities spill on the roads which reduces width of the effective carriageway thus resulting in traffic congestion and unsafe walkable environments the condition is further made worse when vehicular parking also encroaches the footpath therefore there is a need for holistic road designs having space for informal activities parking which do not hinder the pedestrian safety and movement indian cities have always been walkable at their heart however recent planning approaches have overlooked that feature and have rendered indian cities vehicular and thus unpedestrian therefore the planning needs to ensure promotion of walkable neighborhoods with everyday commercial and leisure activity instead of segregated and homogeneous land use neighborhoods second safe and hassle free non motorized commute for all holistic physical street design of the pedestrian infrastructure encompassing all user groups whether vulnerable or able members and provision of street infrastructure to encourage and boost pedestrian accessibility sensitive bylaws policies and regulations to safeguard and nurture the experience of a pedestrian by taking in surveys and engaging people better public transport infrastructure to increase accessibility mobility and curb pollution awareness programs to build civic sense and responsibility facilitating and increasing collaboration between architects planners transport engineers and the users civic engagement via design discussions understanding of commute requirements need of modes 
safety and security in them and rules and regulations and their enforcement. Thank you so much everyone for your patience and time. This is the end of our presentation. Thanks a lot.